Shalom family, Shalom Israel. This is me, Iman Wall from BOW Bay Area, and I got my brother Amat Zion here, man. Say Shalom, Mike. Shalom to all the 12 tribes scattered abroad, man. Kwame Asherala. Kwame Asherala, most definitely. Well, today, family, we're going to be going over a topic that's, man, it's it's just one of those things, right, that we need to, that we need to apply, right? Because I, I, I'm not going to lie. I got a lot of people in my life that still claim to be Christian, right? But this is the thing, right? And I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. With everyone here, Christ, just like the title says, Christ isn't for Christianity. The religion, Christianity. Of course, we're supposed to be Christians, followers of Christ, followers of the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, but we are not Christians in the religious sense, right? And we're going to get that real quick, right? So, mm, yeah, so that's pretty much what we're going to go over, right? So pretty much, are you ready, Amatazai? Come on, come on. Come on bring, uh, bring out Luke 2, if you can, Baba Kasha. Luke 2 and um, start at 49. Uh, right, because we got to see what Christ is about. Not what man is about, but what Christ is about. This is the book of Luke, chapter 2 and verse 49. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. Wait, hold up. Is Christ about Catholicism and about LGBTQ priests? Like, let's be honest. Is he about that, Matazar? Nah, no, not at all. <laughs> not what did it say? What did it say? Le read the latter part for me. It says, Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. Christ, yeah, how was shy is about his father's business, right? And matter of fact, keep reading down all the way to verse 40, 52 to finish it out. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Yahweh Shai increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Man, he, in he increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God. Why is he in favor with God, his father? Because he's because he's doing his father's business. He's doing his father's business, right? So I want to get that clear. Christ, that, like that's a cut already. Christ is about his father's business. He's not about religion. He's not about Catholicism, um, Christianity, baptism or Baptist, Methodist, whatever it is. He's about the word. He's about his father's business, right? Let's go to um, Sirach 29 real quick. Come on. Right, let's go to Sirach. Um, and I want Sirach 29 and verse 19. Baba Kesha. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 29 and verse 19. A wicked man transgressing the commandments of the Lord shall fall into suretyship. Mm -hmm. And he that undertaketh and followeth other men's business for gain shall fall into suits. Okay, so the reason why I brought this scripture out is because if you're transgressing um, the commandments of the Most High God, you're going to fall short, right? And the business, and this right here, the latter part, and he that undertaketh and followeth other man's business for gain shall fall into suits. We shouldn't be about other man's business. We should be strictly about the law, statutes, and commandments that God bestowed upon us, right? So that's what Yahweh Shah was doing. He was about his father's business. And we should do the same, right? Because we're followers of Christ, right? So, um, yeah, I wanted to bring that out, right? Let's go to uh, Matthew 5 and 17, man. We're going to go to a different topic, right? We know that Christ is about his father's business, right? But let's get to a different topic on what Christ did for us and what Christianity teaches a guest, right? Bring it out when you got it out. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or right. the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So when so when Jesus came, did he did he come to uh put the law on the cross? Absolutely not. 
he, so he didn't put the law on the cross because that's what I, I I was taught at church. Ah, uh -huh. man, what he do? Read it again, like Baba Gesha. It says, "Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill." Christ came to fulfill the laws and the prophecies that were written about him in the Old Testament. He didn't come so that he can put the law of fornication on the cross so that we can fornicate. You know, he didn't do that. Christ came just so that he can fulfill the things that were written of him um, before. Right. So that's why he came. Christianity teaches otherwise. Christianity teaches that. The law was put on the cross when he died on the cross. That's not what he came for. Right. I wanted to get that real quick. Um, let's go to um John 10. Let's go to John John 10 and let's start at verse um 31. If you can, Bobby. Let's start at verse 31. This is the book of John, chapter 10, and verse 31, and it reads. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Yahweh Shai answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? Then no, the Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Slack you. Yahweh Shai answered them, it is not written in your law. Is it not written in your law? Salakia, I said, ye are gods. Man, so, Amatazai, quick question. Are you a god? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. If I were to say, if a Christian were right here and heard literally what you just said, Amatazai, they'd be like the Pharisees and try to stone you. Yeah, it'd be an uproar. It'd be an uproar. It'd be, whoa, 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 whoa. They'd be like, wait, what What you say? You're the most high God? No. Man, read it again. Read, read it again. What Jesus say? Yahweh Shai answered them, is it not written in your law? Is it not I written in the law? Right. Yahweh Shai was, Christ was telling the Pharisees, bro, isn't, isn't this not written? Is this written in the law? Yes or no? That ye are gods? Uh -huh. Bro, but the Pharisees were the first ones to pick up stones and try to stone him. And uh, Salakia, I, this is why Christianity has such a hard time because Man. they don't study the Bible. They don't study where these words come from, right. what they actually mean. See, a lot of people get tripped up by that word God and they'll just take it left. You see what I'm saying? That right. word God or Elohim. Okay, Elohim, if you're speaking in plural, it just means power. Okay, so when we refer to the most high God as the most high God, that means he's the most high power. It doesn't get no higher than him. So you have to understand what the definitions of these words mean. But this right. is what happens when you go around calling God just God when he actually has a name. So you can refer to him correctly. You see what I mean? So we know that the most highest God name is Yahweh. So when we refer to the most high and we call him Yahweh, we are speaking on his name, you know, so that that sets him apart from everything else because, you know, he is the most high and it does not get higher than him. So don't get caught up with that word God, because it just it literally means power. It literally means power. Are we a power in the earth? Absolutely. Right now we in punishment. But what's going to happen when Yahweh shot cracks that sky and he comes back and everything gets turned back around how it's supposed to be? We are. Not only are we going to be gods, but we're going to have that status of gods because we're going to be a power in the earth. So, and Amen. I yield right there. Come for sure, most definitely. Beautiful point. It the word God is just a title. It's not the name of the Father. Just like we know that Jesus is King, right? But aren't Amen. but isn't Israel kings and priests? Amen. So it's just a title. I'm not saying I'm I'm Jesus though when I'm saying I'm a king. That that's not what I'm saying, right? Because it's just a title. You know, I we acknowledge who who our heads are. You know what I'm saying? We acknowledge that Christ is our head and Christ's head is is the Father. We acknowledge that for sure, most definitely. We're not calling, we're not blaspheming from the Holy Spirit like the Pharisees were saying. 
not at all we just understand what christ is saying when he says is it written in the law that ye are gods that's all like we just understand you know what i'm saying he was a matter of fact can I, yeah. i'm gonna get that scripture for him just so they can understand what was going on all right which one I, I'm, I'm gonna get that scripture too when uh even when david said that we're gods all right so watch oh, oh yeah i was gonna get that king it was in my okay. list uh okay. let me, uh, come on, come on. matter of fact uh let me see when i was gonna pull it out let me uh It was in my list. Hold up. Uh, where is it? Um, matter of fact, I'm going to just um, pull it out. I'll pull it out. Pull it out. It's all okay. good. Uh, yeah, I'll pull it out. Okay. Gotcha. I'm going to pull it out twice. <laughs> So you say you you say you gonna pull it out twice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good though. Just bring it out, okay? All right. This is Psalms eighty-two and verse six. This is David speaking. I have said, "Ye are gods, mm. and all of you are children of the Most High." So just let's just put it in simpler terms, right? If we right. know the Most High God is a God, He is a power. We know Yahweh Shai is a power, okay? And if Yahweh Shai is the child, if it is the begotten son of the Most High, then that makes him a God, right? So that makes him a power. And if we are the children of the Most High God, which is the Most High power, what does that make us? That makes us a power. Hence why David said, ye are gods and you are children of the Most High. Because where does our power come from? It comes from him. So, okay. you know, it's, it's just a simpler term. So when people don't get don't get too caught up on the word God, learn it in context and learn what it's talking about. So you don't get misconstrued in these things and you don't you don't get the uh, bearing false witness to saying people are blaspheming by saying they're a God. You see what I'm saying? Because you can really get caught up in that. And that's a dangerous thing. You see what I mean? So. But yeah, we are gods. We are children of the most high God. You see what I mean? So yeah, and I rest right there. All praises. Yeah, let's let's go back to John 10 though, um, and kind of finish the point. Let's read down to verse 39. Okay. You said read down to verse 39? Yeah, yeah. So continue from 34. Okay. <clears throat> then it says, if he called, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, thou ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore, they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond Jordan into the place there. where John there, at right first there, baptized. If, if you can yield. It's okay. all good. Yeah, Con, you got the point. So this is important, right? Because it says right here, if I do not the works of my father, believe me not. So Christ is saying, bro. If, if I'm not doing what my father is telling me what to do, if I'm not doing my father's business, don't believe me, right? But if I do, though ye believe me not, believe the works that the father is in me and I in him. Man, all Christ is saying is that he's in one accordance with his father because he does everything the father tells him to do. He's not saying, he's not saying, you know, I'm the most high God, this and that. No, he's just in one accordance with his father because he's about his father's business. Right. That's all it is. That's all it is, family. That's all right. And we can move on from that. Let's um let's get Matthew 10. Let's get Matthew 10. Uh, it's just one point real quick. One point real quick. Matthew 10 34, Bobby Kashan. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 34. 
Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Did Christ come for butterflies and rainbows? Not at all. What did it say? It says, I am not come. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Christ, this is red letter family. Christ didn't come to send peace, but a sword. Did Christ, Christ ain't messing around, right? We we were taught in the church that you know Christ is all lovey dovey, butterflies and rainbows, um, and hugs and kisses, right? But Christ has a nature, right? And his nature is very much good. We can't argue that, but also Christ, you know what I'm saying? When he comes back, man, when his second coming is is you know what I'm saying, it's gonna appear. It's not going to be all, you know, butterflies and rainbows. It's actually going to be dark skies and red moons and foggy days, rainy days. You know what? You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be pretty. And con, right? Um, can I, can I bring out a preset box? Go ahead. Up. All right. One second. I got you. Give me one second. You good, Aki? Yeah, man. Because at Christian, bro, when I used to go to church, I used to go to church every Sunday, right? Every Sunday. I used to go to kids service, right? Growing up, you know what I'm saying? When matter of fact, my dad used to be the teacher for for the for my child class. You know what I'm saying? And you know, we we would, you know what I'm saying, talk about like the good stuff. You feel me? John uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and begotten son, but for whoever believes in the shall perish by everlasting life. Like we learned that John 3:16, the Philippians 4 and 13, but Christ. We don't read the other verses in the chapter, man, or uh, the other verses in the book. That's why in Christianity, we don't know Christ's true nature. Con. And look at um, I brought this precept and I'm gonna tell you why. So I'm gonna read it first. This is Amos 5 and 18. Mm -hmm. It says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Okay, mm -hmm. so now. This is how you know Christ is not for Christianity because Christians will sit here and tell you I'm waiting and I can't wait till Christ comes back because he's coming to save us. But in Amos, it says it's danger and destruction to those who desire the day of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Because it's not going to be a good day. Yes, it's going to be deliverance. Israelites are going to get salvation, but there's going to be a lot of destruction. There's going to be a lot of killing. That's why actually when this verse says, what end is it? To what end is it for you? You see right. what I mean? So Christians are out here hoping and, oh, I can't wait till Christ comes back. But that's not even, the, the scriptures tell you not to desire that day. That's how you know Christ is not for Christianity. Come. You see what I mean? So I yield there. For sure, Cam. I mean, it's kind of that simple, man. It's simple, but you know, our people are simple. I'm just yeah, be absolutely. completely honest. Yeah. Yeah. Our people are simple, man. Yeah, I hate to say it, but it's true, right? Nah, that's what it is, man. You know, we gotta we gotta be real about these things. Right, yeah. Let's um let's move on from that though. Let's go to Revelations 2. Um and start at 26, Baba Kasha. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 2, and verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Right here, man. So Christ is so down with his father's business. He's going to give Israel a rod of iron so that we can rule over the nations. Because the Most High God told Jesus to tell us to do that it was it was like a like a scale you know what i'm saying the most High was right here he told his son to uh to tell us to rule over the nations and then that's what we were going to do to the nations and it just goes on christ is about his father's business but the crazy thing is christianity is it's like wait what what did christ say that he was gonna like have y'all do read that again i because i think that went over people's heads man You said read it again? Yeah, yeah, oh, because sorry. my computer yeah. glitching, bro. Okay. Um, yeah. um 
It says, okay. and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Mm. Right there. It says, right. And, he, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So it's, it's plain. This is red letter too, family. So this is what's going to happen in the kingdom. Christianity don't believe in this. Christianity believes that, oh, um, you know what I'm saying? When, when it's judgment day, people are just going to go to hell or going to go to heaven. No. The other nations have to deal with the consequences that they were given. Right? That's, that's just plain. That's prophecy. The heathen have to go to these go through these tribulations, like how we went through these tribulations, man. You know what I'm saying? So this is all this is pretty much just a judgment that Christ is giving to these other nations. We're gonna rule over them with rigor. That's essentially what's gonna happen, right? But but what what does Christianity teach? Butterflies and rainbows, John 3 16, and that's it. When Christ comes back, he's just he's coming to take his people when they're going up in the sky. <laughs> Ridiculous, man. Y'all don't even know the nature. Y'all don't even understand how, like, y'all don't understand how this man gets down. You don't like you don't understand like the mission that his that his father, like, you know what I'm saying, that yeah. his boss gave him. Like, y'all don't understand right. the magnitude of what's going on. And when this man comes back, like it's either you with him or you against him. And you don't want to be on the other side of that. You really, really don't. Because guess what? Last time he came as the lamb, this time he's coming back as the lion. The conquering yeah. lion. Right. All praises. All praises, right? Um, let's move on, though. Let's go to um, Numbers 24 and verse 15. And read down to verse 19, Baba Kishore. Uh, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 24 and verse 15. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, has said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance. But having his eyes open, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There so shall right, here, right here, family. So this is... So this is a prophecy that um, pretty much um, Balaam is is having. You know what I'm saying? So this is what's going to happen, man. Right? Keep reading, okay? And it says, There shall come a star out of Jacob, and the scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth, and Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies and Israel shall do valiantly out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion mm -hmm. and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city it says out of Jacob shall shall uh, come he that shall have dominion who's that person Yahweh Shai that's Yahweh Shai right and it's also said too the star of Jacob the star of Jacob right so what's going to happen is, is Christ going to give the Moabites and Edomites flowers? Absolutely not. What did it say? He's going to smite them, right? Slavery or death. They're getting smitten, family. Christ is not giving flowers to these other nations. He's not giving heart-covered heart, heart chocolates and stuff like that. That's not what's going to happen. And uh, um, this is how backwards Christianity is. Since Christ got crucified, resurrected, and then went back up and, and sat at the right hand of the Most High. Right. He's been watching the torment, the destruction, the oppression, the murder, the rape, the robbery, the the uh, the poverty strickenness. He's watched all this happen to his people, the same people he comes from, the people he are meant to rule, the people that he loves. And you mean to tell me that when he comes back? He's going to come back and it's going to be smiles and Hallmark cards and he's going to be saving everybody and everybody gets to be included. No, no. You got to be a damn fool if you think that's about to happen. You know what I'm saying? You got to be a damn fool 
to think that's going to happen. Because when that man comes back, he's coming back to save, deliver, and destroy this wicked world we live in. God, man. I mean, this it's that simple, man. What what I didn't put this in my lesson, but um just for you know, for the sake of the spirit, right? Let's go to Matthew um one and twenty-one. Right, because we're mentioning these other nations and how Yahweh Shah or Christ is gonna destroy these people. Why? Right, bring that out. Right. Come on. Well, you got it, Baba Kasha. One and twenty-one? Yeah, come on. Uh, this is the book of Matthew, chapter one and verse twenty-one. And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shah, for he shall save his people from their sins. Christ is going to save his people from sins. He's not saving the Edomites or the Moabites or any other nation for that matter, right? He's saving his people. And that's and that's just it's as simple as that family. You know, um Christianity, you know, they they want to be all inclusive, man, like oh, this and that. Woo, woo, woo. It's just they trying know, to get them ties. Man, they try that's that's really what <laughs> they are trying to get them ties though, man um that's crazy no but that's for real though a lot of christian a lot of christian pastors are up they're living in the hills they're living in the in the two three million dollar houses but what about the what about the congregants you know the congregants are still you know what i'm saying like barely barely being able to get by you know living paycheck to paycheck you know what i'm saying God. But it's, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, man. Christianity is just, honestly, to me, it's a joke. I'm going to be completely honest. It's 100% truth. It's a joke. Because the, the pastors reap the reward, you know, but the congregants are still, you know what I'm saying, doing what they're doing, man. They're seeking hope. You know, our people, that's crazy, too. I didn't, I didn't put this in my lesson either, but our people, our people especially, we're the ones that go to church the most and we get the least. We get the least family. We go to church the most like, bro. Like, I remember like um, just going to just going to church every Sunday. It was um, it was uh, it was our service. It was the Northern Kingdom service. And then after it was the Southern Kingdom service. And it was packed. It was packed. You know what I'm saying? Packed to the you know what I'm saying? People standing up, you know what I'm saying? Like everyone, there's no more chairs. You know what I'm saying? They're talking about walkie talkies, like, like what? But in this truth, man, if we go to a Hebrew Israelite school, there's going to be like 10, 15 people, uh, you know, uh, because, because our people just, they want to hear the John 3, 16 in the Philippians 4 and 13. They don't want to hear the revelations 2 and 26, you know? They don't want to hear the Isaiah 14, verse 1. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. So that's why I know Christianity is a joke, because they're soft. It's soft. The Bible isn't a soft book. If you wanted a soft book, read Dr. Seuss. You know what I'm saying? The Bible isn't there. So um, we can we can drop that, right? We got the point. Right. Um, let's go to Revelations 22 and 16. Um, just to prove that the star of Jacob is, um, is Christ, right? Yahweh Shai. Bring it out when you got it, Ken. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 22 and verse 16. I, Yahweh Shai, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. He's the bright and morning star and comes from David. And who does David come from, Amatiza? David comes from. You said who does David come from? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, he comes from the, the tribe of Judah. Judah and who, who's he's the son of Judah? Oh, and he's, he's Judah. Israelite. Who's yeah. Judah, and who's Judah's father? Yeah, Israel. So yeah. Israel. Jacob, right there, man. Um, so that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, Christ and Yahweh Shire is the star, you know. That's going to destroy these nations, these Moabites and these Edomites. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's pretty much it, family. That was just to prove. Also, let's go to, um, let's move points, right? Let's go to Matthew 15. You know what I want. Right? 
uh, Canaanite woman. Absolutely. Come on, uh, we, we we're gonna read the whole story of the Canaanite woman. All right, so I'm good. All right, this is the this is the book of Matthew, uh, chapter fifteen, and I'm gonna start at verse twenty one. It says, Then Yahweh went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Zidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. No, Christianity says that Christ is sent to everybody that, quote unquote, believes in him. Read the latter part out. <laughs> and it says, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not, not everybody that, quote unquote, believes in him, right? I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right there. Christ isn't sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This this Canaanite woman pleads her case. Hey, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. She's sick, right? But Christ and his disciples didn't, you know, didn't really care, you know. But Christ, you know, he stood up and told her, like, yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm not sent for you, right? But let's let's finish the story, right? Let's finish the story. And, this, and it reads, then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Right. So it's it's not, you know, what I'm saying it's not really appropriate for me to give you the blessing that's for Israel and give it to a dog. Right. He's pretty much telling this Canaanite woman, she's a dog. Right. You're, you're a dog. You're a beast. Like, it, you know, what I'm saying you ain't nothing special. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I remember like um when I was in Nicaragua, right? There's hella like um stray dogs, all these fetal lice, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They're walking around and when uh, we eating and stuff, you know, they come, they come here and you know, they want my food, right? Uh, and I'm like, I mean, I'm a you know, I like dogs, man. They're my weak spot. So I like give them a little bit, but yeah. I'm not giving them my whole plate. Like here right, you go, right, right. Plate. give them a little fast equal, you know, like here and there, you know what I'm saying? That's what Christ is pretty much telling this Canaanite. God. <laughs> like, bro, like, like imagine, like, you know, literally when the feet of lice would come, just a little piece, a little piece of meat, right? Or maybe even a vegetable I don't like. I'm like, here you go, man. I don't like this. And the feet of lice, the dogs don't even like the vegetables. It's hella funny, but yeah, they like the good stuff. But um, that's besides the point, right? Um, but no, like he, it just, it just proves to you that that Christ didn't come for everybody, right? Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying. It just proved yeah. that because he said out of his own mouth that he's not sent, but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Man, you know what no. I mean. So people have to, people have to, like, 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 how do I don't get how Christians want to think they can supersede what came out of Christ's own mouth? Right. Christ said. Christ said he's only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. No, Jesus, you're sent to everybody. How the hell are you going to do that? That's a Christ lie. says, hey, think not that I've come to destroy the law. No, Christ, we don't have to keep the law yet. Like, how, how do y'all figure y'all can do that? How do you figure you can do that? I don't I don't understand it. Like, it's baffling to me how y'all figure that y'all supersede the words of Hamashiach. You see what I'm saying? It, it don't work like that. It's it don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. Gotta it's get funny. it together. Especially my brothers and sisters who are Israelites by blood, and you're in Christianity, bro. Get out of it and come worship the Father, and 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 and, and, and have faith in the Son the right way. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? The right way, because you're stuck in a religion that has enslaved you, has beaten you, has robbed you. It's mistaught you. It has you going off thinking that certain things to do that are okay, and it's not. It's literally, it's literally taking you astray. You see what I mean? And a lot of people don't realize that. I see this a lot, of, a lot in Christianity. It'll be like the scriptures will say, "Okay, look, let's take, let's take Matthew uh, five and seventeen for instance. It says, right. think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill.' What they'll say is, "Oh, well." 
that was that was back then. We're under grace now after Christ died. Okay, so what do you mean you're under grace now that Christ died when he said that I've come not to destroy the law? So me being here, coming here, dying and being crucified, that's not me destroying the law. Right. And then people will be like, you'll read this to them on the street and people are like, but my pastor said, it's not about what your pastor said. Excuse my language, but that shit is borderline idolatry because it's not what your past, it's not about what your pastor said. Right. See what I mean? It's about mm -hmm. what the scriptures say. The scriptures are for our learning. If it's not in the scriptures and your pastor is telling you to do contrary, run immediately. All right. And with that, I rest my point. Man, beautiful. Beautiful, man. God read that red letter, man. Con. God read that red letter. Let's um let's finish the story though. Let's finish the story though. Con. And it says, um, uh, but she but he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, True, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Yahweh answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith be it unto thee even as thou wilt and her daughter was made whole from that very hour so um in in simple terms right christ gave her a little piece of the of the meat that he had on his plate you know what i'm saying that's all he did he blessed her with that blessing right he gave her that little piece of meat that he had on his plate but he's still going to finish that whole rest of meat you know what i'm saying whole piece of carne inside you know, but he he gave the burnt part to this canine woman. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He gave the burnt part. You know what I'm saying? That's all it that happened. He didn't he didn't save this canine woman. He didn't save his. He didn't save this woman. He just gave her a little blessing. And that's why I'm and I'm glad you said that too, King, because right. people would be like, "Hey, well, look, he he healed her daughter, bro. If that's what you call salvation, <laughs> if that's what you call getting saved." Like that, like then, then hey, then then you just then you then you're happy with the crumbs, yeah. Because the promises, yeah, yeah. So, the the salvation, everlasting life, right? Rulership, dominion, that's not going to no other nation but Israel, right? God. You see what I mean? So if you can, if you take this out of context and think that hey, well look, he saved you or not, but he literally says two verses before that he's not sent, but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's how you. That's how you know people don't have no understanding, or they're trying to make the scriptures fit their understanding. Stop mm -hmm. misconstruing. Stop misinterpreting the scriptures to fit your wicked deeds. Okay, Christ only came for the Israelites. The Israelites are the ones who get salvation. All right, and with that, I rest my point. Con, con, con. Let's um, uh, just let's get Matthew ten and five real quick, just to you know further our point, right? Con. Matthew 10 and 5 and 6. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 5. These 12 Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yes, we Christ came for the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And the 12, you know, the 12 tribes of Bride. You know what I'm saying? That's all. Um, right. That's that's pretty much it. It's as simple as that. He told his disciples to do this and they listened. They they didn't say, Oh, what about the heads uh the uh Jebusite? Or what about the uh the Edomite or the Ammonite? No, he said to the Israelites which are black hispanic and native americans you know what i'm saying so um yeah let's that's pretty much it let's go to um john 8 right let's go to john 8 Bible Kisha. and let's go to verse um let's read 28 and 29 <clears throat> read it when you got it out this is the book of John, chapter 8, and verse 28. And it reads, Then said Yahweh unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak right. things. So he, Christ literally said, I do nothing of myself, 
of, of myself, but as my father had taught me. Christ is not doing his own will. He's not walking around doing whatever he wants to do. No, he listens to his father because he's about his father's business, like how we were talking about before, right? Um, keep reading. Verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. So Christ pleases his father because that's his head. Right. In first Corinthians 11, it says that Christ's head is the father, God. Right. So that's all it is. Right. And I'm and I'm the reason why I brought this out, because I'm trying to bring out a point real quick. Right. Um, a matter of fact, um, go to uh, verse uh, 56 and read through 58. Bob Kasha. Verse because. 56. Yeah. Come. Your father, Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad then said the jews unto him thou art not yet 50 years old and thou and hast thou seen abraham yahweh shai said unto them verily verily i say unto you before abraham was i am oh oh the trinity the trinity you know that's what christians like to say right they say oh Christ said, I am. He's the same thing as he's the same thing as the father. Right. That's why Christians, they, they like to say, oh, I know that you read that in verse um, 28 or whatever, that he does everything that his father wants him to do. Right. But read this. It says that I am. Right. Let's get into that. Right. Because that might confuse people. The Trinity is confusion, bro. Honestly. Right. But um, matter of fact, let's get that. I'm going to. Um, also pull up the blue letter. I'm going to share my screen real quick. But go to Exodus chapter 3. All right. Let me share my screen real quick, family. Right. Okay, Khan. Can you see my screen, Art? Khan. Khan. Let's go to um, Exodus 3. and Verse... From the top, from the two, yeah, from the top. Um, read one and two, Bible Kishar. This is the book of Exodus, the chapter three, from the top. <clears throat> now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And um, this is a very famous story in the Bible, the burning bush. We always used to go over this in a Christian um, at, at church, right? Um, every Sunday, almost really. But um, let's get who the I am was, right? Let's get who that was, right? Um, because that's what the bush is going to say right here. Let's go to verse 13 and read 14 to Baba Kishah. Say that again. Um, go to um, verse 13 and to 14, Baba Kasha. Uh, verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said thus, Shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. I am. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. So people, you know, they get they get confused, right? Because it said God said that I am and I am. And Jesus said that I am. So that's why Jesus is God and the father is Jesus and the Holy Spirit is Jesus. No, family, let's go. The reason why I wanted to bring out the blue letter, because we got to go to the Hebrew, right? Let's go to the word God, right? H430, right? If you guys see, it's the word Elohim, right? What does Elohim mean in the biblical usage? Can you read this, Ark? Uh, it's kind of, uh, you probably have to zoom in on it, can Zoom in, con, con, con. Right. You see these? It says the word Elohim. 
Plural. Rulers, judges, divine ones, angels. Right? We were reading that, right? We were reading God, that. God. Gods. Uh, God like. You know, that's that's pretty much like that's pretty much what it is. Elohim, the word God doesn't mean the doesn't always mean I'm gonna say it like this the father, right? Even with an uppercase G, doesn't always mean the father. It could mean it could mean you know um Yahweh Shai, like how we just brought it up, right? So we're not saying that Christ isn't divine, but we're not saying but but we're saying that he isn't the most high God, he's not his father. They're God. two different things. <clears throat> God. Because what did the Bible say? In what did Exodus three and one say? He says, um, "My bad." Uh, no, three and two. It says, three and two. "Yes." It says, and the angel of the Lord appeared. The angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. The Lord is is the Father, in this context, right? But the angel is Yahweh Shai. So um, I wanted to bring that out. Also. Um, I could stop sharing my screen. I might pull the blue letter out a little later, but um, hold on. let me go back. Okay, Khan, I'll praise it. So, yeah, I, I just wanted to show you guys that because people get, you know what I'm saying? People get confused. They're like, I don't know when it's talking about, I don't know when it's talking about Jesus or when it's talking about God or the Father. You know, it's hard to, it's hard to tell. That's why, you know, you got to use your context clues, right? Con you learned that in school, man. You learned that in when you're learning English, right? It's called comprehension. You got to learn how to comprehend the scriptures. So that's why we that's why we say that Christ isn't the most high God. And Christians, stop just jumping to the back of the book. Man. <laughs> because if you don't read the Old Testament, you're not going to understand the New Testament. There you go. And you're going to get it. You're going to start mixing up things and thinking things, say things that they don't or, or, miss, or messing up the meanings of things. You see what I mean? Because if you just jump to the back of the book, and when Christ says before Abraham was I am, you're not even gonna know what the hell is he talking he's talking about. <laughs> no, they don't, man. I thought I thought that was God. But you then know. you have to understand what is Christ, what is, Christ's whole ministry, he used what? The old testament. God. The God. new testament wasn't even written yet. You see what I mean? So understand you have to you have to know the old testament to understand the new testament. Come. Stop just jumping to the back of the book. Matter of fact, I do want to share my screen one more time. Hold up. Salak, your family. Um, because, hold up. Salak, your Let me get this for y'all, family. All right. So, um, I'm going to get Psalms, you know, um, 82 and 6 again, but in a different translation. Uh, right. <clears throat> um, what was it? Say J, it was this right here. Let's go to verse six. Um, it says right here, I don't know if you can see family. It says, This is Psalms chapter 82 and verse six in the CJB. My decree is, You are Elohim, guys and judges, right? Sons of the Most High. Um, sons of the most high, all of you. So we read it earlier. It says that ye are gods, right? Christ said ye are gods. He literally in the same, the same meaning is ye are Elohim or you are Elohim. So we're called gods too. We're called Elohim as well because we're gods and judges. Like I said, right here, I'm not saying I'm the most high God though. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying that the word Elohim, the word God means judges right so that's all it is family that's all it is i'm gonna stop sharing my screen again but yeah come just just you know what i'm saying to show y'all like we, we're not lying you know what i'm saying we're not lying when we're saying christ isn't the father or whatever the case no because we're called elohim as well and people because people still think people think that elohim is the father you know what i'm saying but it, it doesn't always mean that you know when it's talking about the father, because when you see that Lord in all capital letters, you know that's the father. Yeah. Man, Salaki, I always, man, I don't know why I'm doing this. I got to share my screen again, man. Hold up, family. My bad, y'all. Um, I'm going to share my screen 
I think a couple times over this lesson. But let's go back to the blue letter. Let's now, family, we're gonna go to John 101, right? You can read it out um from your Bible walk, Bible Kasha. Uh yeah, yeah. But we gotta get this John one and one real quick, man. This John this one and one. This is the book of John, chapter one and verse one. Come. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was God, right? So how we read this, right? I'm going to just tell you how we read it. In the beginning was the word. That's Christ. And the word was with the father. And, and this is Christ. And Christ was God, right? So let's go. Let's go to the blue letter. And I got to get it like this, right? I don't know if you can see. Um, can you see this well? Con, con, it's con. clear. Okay, so it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word, and logos, and logos was with God, Theon, right? Theon, and they say, yeah, Theon, and hold up, and the word was Theos, hold up, what do you mean? Those are two different words for God. Why is that? Because it's talking about two different people. This is the Father, and this is Christ. Simple as that. And we know that because we're just using context clues. We're using our comprehension skills to understand the scriptures. Because it'd be it'd be contradicting if both of these were Jesus Christ. Uh. You know what I'm saying? So that's the whole point, family. Um, that's just you know what I'm saying some. Something that, you know, we got to, you know what I'm saying, consider, right? Sometimes we got to go to the Greek, right, to understand these scriptures. Because reading for face value sometimes is hard for us, right? Um, come on, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. But, yeah, let's, um, let's go into, let's go into quotes that Yahweh Shai or, or Christ had brought out. Let's go to um, 2nd Ezra 1 and 30, Bob Kishai. <clears throat> Second address one and thirty. Come. This is the book of Second Address, chapter one and verse thirty. I gathered you together as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, but now what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. Come, right? So the reason why, oh, so like, um, I mean, yeah, so like, I, I wanted you to read up a little bit, but let's let's just leave it like that because 30 is the meat, right? 30 okay, is now. the meat of the thing. Now let's go to Matthew 23. Let's go to the red letter, right? To see what's going on, right? Because Second Ezra chapter one, where the hell was that at in the, in the 66 books, right? Um, the was that? Right. But bring it out when you got it, dog. Um, Matthew 23 and 37. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 23 and verse 37. Right. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killeth, killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Christ just quoted the Apocrypha. I'm going to read Second Ezra's one more time for y'all. It says, this is Second Ezra's 1 and 30. I gather you together as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings. But now, what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out from my face. That's, Christ is quoting Second Ezra's 1 and 30. Uh -huh. Right there. But why do Christians say, oh, second, first and second Ezra and Toby are not canonical? What are you talking about? They were in the original canon in the 1611. They were in the original King James Bible, right? King James right here. But look, Cambridge, Cambridge right here. You know what I'm saying? This is this was in the Bible, man. Cambridge wrote it. The, the, the university, y'all know. This is in um England, I believe. The 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 school in England. You know what I'm saying? So Christ quoted. 
Christ quoted from the Apocrypha, but Christians like to say, oh, no, Christ didn't teach out of the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is not canonical. It's not it's not the word of God. But I just proved it to you that Christ literally quoted it. Let's get one more quote from Yahweh Shai. Um, Go to um, go to first Maccabees four. Right. Go to first Maccabees four about Bisha. Bring it out when you got it, can First Maccabees four, and where you want me to start? Um, you can start a uh, just start at verse um fifty. Just do fifty six. Fifty six. This is the book of First Maccabees, chapter four, and verse fifty six. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. Uh, go they, to uh, verse 59. Uh, okay. Verse 59. Moreover, Judas and his brethren with the whole congregation of Israel ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days from the five and twentieth day of the month, Caslu, with mirth and gladness. Right here, right. Hey, pay attention. This is the this is the apocrypha here. This is First Maccabees, but let's see what Christ was doing. And matter of fact, let's see what Christ was doing in the month Caslu, right? And we we can get that too. We can get what the month Caslu is real quick, man. Um, go to um, you know, John ten twenty two, Bobby Kasha. Come on, I'm already here. Yeah. All right, this is the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. And Yahweh Shai walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Yahweh Shai was, you know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't, it, this, I, I know Christians like to say, well, it doesn't say that Christ was um, keeping the feast of dedication. It, all it said is it, it, that it was the time of the dedication, man. But this how you cut him. This yeah. how you cut him. Solomon's porch is where? The temple. He's at the temple on the feast of dedication. So what do you think they was doing at the temple? Right there, man. <laughs> That's true. Hold up. That's true. Hold up. Man. Man, it's that simple, man. Keeping the feast of dedication. Bro. He's keeping the feast of dedication, right? And actually, and just just for y'all newcomers, right? The Feast of Dedication in the Hebrew is um, Hanukkah, right? right? So Hanukkah is in the scriptures, right? It's in 1st Maccabees. And 1st and 2nd Maccabees is all, it's more so like a historical book of what our um, of what our brothers um, were going through during the Greek captivity, right? So um, all we're saying is that, you know, Christ kept the Feast of Dedication. You know what I'm saying? But Christians don't like to say Christians. Christians say, oh, Hanukkah is for the Jewish man. Hanukkah is for this. But but why are you celebrating Christmas when it, that's not even about Christ? Uh. <laughs> why are y'all celebrating Christmas when that's not even about Christ, man? They say, oh, it's Christ's birthday. We're celebrating his birthday. When does it say that it, that's his birthday? Uh. When does it say that in the Bible? That's just made up. So that we can follow pagan traditions. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 ridiculous, man. But our people like to go off, man, just because it feels good. There's a scripture like there's a scripture that says that too. Um, you know that paraphrasing, but like sinning feels good. Uh, you know, spending time with your family, eating good food feels good, right? But at what cost though? You know what I'm saying? At what cost? I must rat I honestly, bro. To be honest, I love the feast days of the of the Bible. That's just me. Come I on. love the feast days, man. Forget uh, Christmas. Forget Thanks killing. For thanks, uh, forget Fourth of July. You know what I'm saying, bro? Forget those feasts because the feasts that are in the Bible have a real meaning to it. Trying to go to first fruits. First fruits, man. Tabernacles. Tabernacles, man. You know? Now, oh, I celebrate Jesus' birthday. Come on, bro. Come on, that's that's the reason why you celebrate December twenty fifth for real. I mean, that ain't even his birthday. Yeah, that's <laughs> not even his birthday. I celebrate Hanukkah because that's when we read it. We that's when we rededicated the temple to our people. Come we got a, we pretty much got our get back. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, we literally got back what was ours. Man, you know what I'm saying? But people don't like, they they can forget the history. Our people are like, man, I don't give a fuck about the history. Slack it from my, from my terminology. But our people don't care about our history at all. At all. That's why we're still doing the customs of the heathens. Right? Because this is our history, family. This is our history. But we don't consider it. Right? Um, but yeah, I just wanted to prove that um, Christ quoted from the Apocrypha, right? And he kept the feasts that were in the Apocrypha. And the Feast of Dedication is nowhere mentioned in the 66 books other than this verse right here. So, you know what I'm saying? Just food for thought, family. Keep Hanukkah, family, for real. Um, now, let's go to my last point, right? Let's go to Revelations 2 um, and verse 12, Baba Kasha. And I'm going to pull something out, too, um, after you finish. Um, read down to verse 17, too, Baba Kasha. This is the book of Revelation. Of Revelation chapter 12, uh, chapter 2 and verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath a sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days therein, Antipas was faithful, was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Right. So, so. This is talking about the church of Pergamos, right? This is talking about the church of Pergamos. And it says that right here. So has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I hate. Christ is talking to the church right now. This is red letter. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, I hate that you practice the, the, the practice of the Nicolaitans, right? Keep reading down the walk. Verse 15. So has thou also... Them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Man, this is powerful, and I'm gonna bring out why this is powerful, right? Um, I'm gonna share my screen one last time because this is the last point, family. I know we've been going on for an hour. Let me um let me bring this out though, family. Um let's go back here. Eopedia. Um it's like yeah. Let me look this up. Can you uh can you see my screen art? Con. Okay, con. Uh, I spelled this wrong. Nicolations. There you go. Wait. It's a lot here. I got a source right here, family. So, right here, right? The reason why I brought this out. Oh, it's a lot here. Oh, yeah. Right here. I want to read this point. So it reads, this is from theopedia.com. Um, and the word theo just means like, um, I, th I believe that's the Greek word for God or like um, religion. So um, theology, that's where we get the word theology from. Like um, the, the, you know, whatever. But yeah, I just want to read this point real quick about the Nicolaitans. Because you might be asking, why does, why does Christ hate the acts of the Nicolaitans, right? So it says... The doctrine of the Nicolaitans appears to have been a form of antinomianism, right? Matter of fact, and before before I uh, read the rest, I want to click this real quick. 
What does antinomianism mean? Antinomianism comes from the Greek meaning lawless. Right? Hold up. So the Nicolaitans were antinomianists. They were lawless people. Right? And I'm going I'm to finish this point right here. In Christianity theology, it is a perg uh, pejorative term for the teaching of that Christians are under no obligation to obey the laws of ethics or morality. Because, man, did you get that, Matazar? Time. Dude, these are Christians. The Nicolaitans are Christians. Because what does Christianity say? We don't got to keep the law. Mm -hmm. I can still eat swine. I can still fornicate. And all I got to do is believe on Jesus and I'll be saved. All I got to do is believe on Jesus, right? Yeah, man. Like, that's crazy. Right? Let's, matter of fact, let's, I want to finish my point, though, right here. I want to read this latter part, right? The doctrine of the Nicolaitans appear to have um, been a form of antinomianism, which makes the fatal mistake that man can freely partake in sin because the law of God is no longer binding. That's bro. Christianity right there. That's Christianity, bro. <laughs> That's Christianity. So all you know, Christians, this is exactly what you guys are living by. Man. Antinomianism. Man, and, and salute and salute to my brother, um, my brother Kayla, man, my brother Maxi, because he brought this out to me. I was like, bro, I need this for my lesson, man. So I right, salute to you if you're watching this. Right. But um, it says right here, it held the truth of the um gracious reckoning of righteousness. But suppose that a mere intellectual belief in this truth have a saving power. It's, it's crazy, man. Right. But that's pretty much it, family. You know what I'm saying? These Christians are lawless. They're lawless. They're Nicolaitans. Right. So Christ don't like the Nicolaitans. It, dude, it said that he hates them. It literally said that he hates them. So give that thought family just give that give that thought man food for thought right but um like how we always say man i want to give all praises and honor to yahweh and i was shy and i hope you guys were edified right i hope you guys were really edified by this lesson right um you know we didn't go over too many things i could have brought more things but for the sake of time i just wanted to give you this man um amataza did you have anything to say um this is a great lesson too because um it really going into it's like a it's like a pre-lesson to what me and the brother are going to be doing um we're going to do a three-part series it's going to be called exposing F these fake religions okay and uh -huh. part one is christianity part two is catholicism and part three is islam these are the three religions that have our people in a chokehold so this uh -huh. is a good precursor to that because we're going to be breaking down and exposing these religions and why our people need to get out of them. Okay. We really need to get out of them. The, the, these days are getting shorter. We're getting closer to the day of the Lord. All right. World War three is kicking up. Uh, uh, the, the, the dollar's about to be done. All these prophecies are coming into fruition. So me and the brother, he just did a, a real good lesson today. This was a beautiful lesson. And, um, I'm going to be using it as a precursor for, my lesson for exposing these false religions is going to be a three-part series so look forward to that and um just my brothers and sisters keep the commandments of the most high and keep the faith in yahweh shai hamashiach that is how we get out of here you can't have one without the other keep the laws and have faith in hamashiach okay that is how we get out of here. If anybody's telling you anything other than that, they're speaking contrary to what the scriptures are telling you to do. Okay. So my brothers and sisters who are Israelites by blood, get out of Christianity along with get out of Catholicism and get out of Islam. That is not the way. Okay. That is not the way we are the true people of God. It is. This is a life and death situation. Literally come home return to our father so we can get the hell out of here i know y'all tired of being here me and the brother we tired of being here you know what i'm saying we tired of these cor these corruptible bodies we tired of bit like we're tired of it but we have to endure until the end but come back into our heritage man we are the israelites 
peace and blessings to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. And um, thank you for, you know, you know, just, just, you know, tapping in with our lessons. You know what I'm saying? We got more to come. Um, keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Keep faith in Hamashiach. Kwame Asherala. Kwame Asherala. And we also want to say death to Babylon, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Double death to Babylon. <laughs> That's right, family. All right, then, y'all have a great rest of the Shabbat. And I'm going to say Shalom, fam. Shalom.